Did you know that the expressive kitties that I made in my previous video are now available on a bunch of different products in my Redbubble store? They are super cute and colorful. You can also support me over at Patreon for some extra content and coloring pages and cats, of course. Your support truly means a lot to me. Thank you. End of self-promotion. Hi everyone! So a little while ago Kuretake sent me a bunch of their art supplies and something that I've been very curious to try out are the Sig Clean Color Dot Pens. These pens with rounded tips. This is a set of very pastel colors or mild colors as they like to call it and we also have this set with more earthy tones and these are double-ended so they got this rounded dot nib and also a fine liner nib. I actually don't remember if I ever swatched these in the Kuretake haul video but let's just swatch them real quick. Oh they look so delicious. So depending on how much pressure you use you can make smaller dots or bigger dots. So that is that is fun and of course you can make lines with it too if you just push it down and drag. I don't know why I am explaining how to make a line but it actually looks quite nice on this paper gonna be honest and that almost looks like fish scales or little flower petals. Look at that. Look how pretty they are. I really love these pastel tones, so pretty. And then we have, just gonna pull them out. Let's see if I can arrange them in some sort of color order. Oh, also, don't forget we have the little fine liner nib. So here we have them. I really like the different tones that we got to work with. We got these more pastel tones and we have these more saturated mid-tones. I can also tell, and I don't know if it shows up on camera, that there is a little bit of weird texture going on. It is a little thicker and smoother Bristol board. It is like the ink is lifting up the fibers in the paper almost, but I don't know if that is a bad thing or not. It just looks different. Also, I just realized that these dots that are a little dragged out, they kind of looks like corn, unpopped popcorn, you know. So that is fun. But I really like how they look like petals and that you can make different textures. I really think that you can have a lot of fun with these kinds of pens. They are so easy to just play around with. I have to say that the doodle factor is high, so what made me very intrigued last time I looked at these, in these little example images there is a dog portrait made with dot pens. Might just take that as a challenge. We'll see what happens. Maybe I will make a dog portrait. I am so so tempted to do that. Also, thanks Kurtaki for sending me these pens. Not sponsored. But yeah, let's get started. So I asked my dear patrons for ideas what to make with these dot pens and I got some really great suggestions, especially for a dreamy landscape and some mushrooms and I could definitely imagine a bright and colorful forest made with these pens. So that is what I went with for this piece and I made a little thumbnail sketch in Procreate just to get an idea where to place the different colors and then I sketched it up on smooth thick bristol board and I didn't really know how time consuming it would be to make all of these little dots so instead of filling the whole paper with this illustration I left a little white border around the art and I thought it would be a great idea adding some masking tape around it to get a crisp line but apparently the ink it seeped in under the tape and I'm so so grateful that I noticed it in time or else I would have been so so sad when removing the tape later. It would not have been a happy accident. 
And for this piece, I decided to try out the different textures that you can get combining both lines and dots and shorter lines in different directions. I also used the fine liner nib to add some details. And I realized I can't really overwork it because if I do too many dots in one place, the texture will kind of disappear and just turn into a solid color. So there need to be a little bit of white of the paper showing through for the texture to show, at least for the way that I'm drawing here since I'm not really layering the colors. I didn't do a lot of layering because I wanted to keep the clean pastel tones. I'm usually not a fan of water-based pens and I am assuming that these are water-based since they are not alcohol-based anyway, but water-based pens often tears up the paper. But since you aren't really rubbing these pen nibs on the paper, it is more like dabbing I suppose, the paper holds up really well and I am using a quite thick paper which I can really recommend and I have to say I really love the look of these pens and for being pens that you make dots with they are quite versatile. Pointillism when done right it is really impressive and it looks so good. I'm not sure if my pointillism art is there yet but it was certainly fun trying. For this piece I think I could have pushed the contrast even further and maybe mixed the colors with each other a little more but then I also wanted to keep the soft and dreamy feeling and then I don't want to bring in too dark and saturated colors. As I mentioned before, I wanted to keep the pastel vibes. And I am happy though that I added this little deer creature to the scene, or else it would probably have turned out a little boring. A living creature always makes nature scenes feel a little more alive. I like how the dots make the art feel busy, but also like there is some sort of movement in it. It doesn't feel flat, in my opinion. And I guess dot art or pointillism, it is something that should be looked at from a distance, because when seeing it from too close, it looks kind of messy and you get a little confused by all the dots, but from afar, you look at it more as a whole piece and the blobs and the textures, it turns into to an image and I think as a first piece with these dot pens it didn't turn out too shabby if I'm gonna be honest. It looks pretty cool and I love the textures and the colors. I'm not sure if I am in love with all the different textures mixed together though but it was really fun trying this out. I am at least learning something from it and that is always something. Let me know what you think. So of course I had to make a dog portrait. I've been making a lot of dog portraits but never with dots only so I thought it would be a fun challenge and this time I will be doing dots only, no lines or anything, only dots just to take the challenge a little further. And at first it felt a little intimidating because it is sort of like a lineless style which I am not that familiar with and also it is dots but I realized that the best way to approach this style is to be a little more relaxed just as in my previous video where I tried out a more expressive art style. It works a lot better when not thinking and planning too much. It is also a little wearing on the hand and the wrist to frequently push down the pen but I noticed that when relaxing my wrist a bit it wasn't that bad it really helped to be a little more relaxed 
But yeah, I really, really enjoyed working on this portrait. I am very pleased with how it is turning out. I have become a little more confident with these art supplies after the first piece and now I want to experiment and mix the colors a bit more to get deeper tones and a more realistic look. So for the dog's tongue, I layered pink and this yellowish peachy tone and then I added some light blue for the shade and for the shading on the white fur, I used both grey and this lighter blue. Grey for the deeper shading and the blue for the lighter shading, just to get a bit of variation and to keep the softness of the art. I really tried to add more contrast in this piece, but I still want it to look kind of soft and fluffy. I usually really like black bold outlines for my art, but for this style, I think a softer lineless look looks a lot nicer. So I used the darker blues to add some contrast and even if it is a lineless style I had to add some lines all made with dots of course, especially around the mouth and tongue there needed to be some lines to separate the different parts and again it adds contrast. Honestly I really enjoyed working with this medium and the style. I can definitely see myself trying this out again and that is why I love trying out new art supplies. It's not only to make content for YouTube, but I truly enjoy trying out new things, new styles, new techniques. Sometimes I love the new things and sometimes I don't, but I feel like I can always learn something from it. So if you know any art medium or art supplies or styles that you haven't seen me try out before, let me know and I might test it out. So I hope you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment, let me know what you think and if you have ever tried out pointillism yourself and maybe subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you will be blessed by Square Kitty. Thanks Kurtaki for the pens and thank you guys for watching, I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats, bye!